Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. But it's also crazy to me to think, okay, 10 years ago when the chip first came out, that was like mind-blowing technology. Because prior to that, it was map paper maps and trying to figure out where you were and here we are today like you know 10 years later everybody's got a smartphone yeah and now it just automatically updates on your phone obviously we were founded in the west that will always be core to us but we have a ton of folks in the midwest southeast that that use a product for whitetail hunting yeah. sometimes it's studying it after the fact yeah. because you might not be able to put all the pieces together while you're out no. there once you get home you can look at it on a bigger screen you yeah. can put it up on, even on your tv screen or your ipad or yeah whatever. look it on 3d and really just like study it and it all of a sudden it might it might click Pioneering the spirit of the Wild West with 70 years of legendary innovation by your side. Built on the legacy of the Ruger Single Six, the new Wrangler is aimed for the drifter in all of us. Saddle up and ride, this one is wanted. The perfect revolver, whether it's your first or your next. Hey, I'm Christy Titus, and for the past several years, I've really come to rely on OnX Hunt for mapping both in and out of the field. But now I'm also using it to plan and research units for my application season. OnX has teamed up with TopRet to show you everything that you need for draw odds in most of the Western states. And access to TopRet services is completely free to all elite members. I now have both the power of Onyx Hunt and Top Rut to help me strategize my state hunting applications. If you haven't already, download Onyx Hunt and upgrade to the elite membership to access Top Rut as well as other great elite benefits. Hey everybody, thank you for joining me for this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. We are recording live from the Wild Sheep Foundation National Convention in Reno, Nevada, and I am here with my friend Dylan Dowson from Onyx Hunt, Onyx Maps, whatever <laughs> anybody wants to call Onyx everything, because we are all like addicted to Onyx. Uh, and we're adulting this year, ching ching. We are. Yeah, last year we had cocktails. Yep. Um, and since then you've had a baby, not you personally. Yes. But you had a baby and now look at us, we're drinking yep. tea and energy drinks. Yep, I think we both hit the gym this morning, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Hit the gym, caffeine and mm -hmm. hydration. We are, we're growing up. <laughs> well, I did, um, you know, for all of you out there, there's some guys online that were, like to remind me all the time that I've uh, gained some weight. I'm like, yeah, thanks, I got married <laughs> and, um, <laughs> F off. <laughs> no. Um, so yeah, we're Yogi and I are really trying to make like a, a big push on, you know, being healthy and maintaining this level of lifestyle um, of, you know, being able to be mobile in the backcountry. Yep. Like, you know, we moved to Wyoming and I, we had never hunted this particular area and we went down this like old horse trail and it was dark when we started and we were in heavy timber and as it lightened, I was able to see the terrain around me, and I seriously had an oh crap. <laughs> Many Where panic are attack. we? It looked like we were going sheep hunting. I'm like, we're supposed to be elk hunting. What are we doing? It was so hellaciously steep, and the mountains were like, um, I, I was awestruck. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up killing my elk in a spot this year where we were we had 1600 vertical feet to climb out one mile and then it kind of flattened out to where we could hike back to our atv and i'm like man wyoming and that's packing an elk out of that 1600 yeah yeah, yeah. and i'm like wyoming a, uh, i'm gonna have to get in better shape again yeah. <laughs> this is ridiculous it's a pull it's it's difficult to do especially on the road oh, like it's horrible. easier you know what when you're at home to be in a yeah, routine and stuff yeah. but then you get on the road and you're seeing people you haven't seen all year and it's easy to stay late and uh, yeah. well, have a few fun. too many Well, it's fun. Everybody misses and, each other. We're all hanging yeah. out here. You know, the theme here is come for the sheep, stay for the party. Yep. I can't say that enough because it is so fun here. Um, yep. But, 
literally like it's really easy it was 11 30 when we got to our room last night and that was an early night like, yeah you know i think i was in bed by like 10 30 oh you it were was, way it was earlier crazy. even than I know. us a dad Impressive. life. Impressive. Yep. <laughs> dad we, life. We have number two on the way here in about a month and oh, a half. Oh, I had no idea yep. you were expecting April, another. April, early April. Congratulations. So, second boy, so we'll get exponentially more busy. But uh, yeah, you're gonna have yeah. your hands full. Yeah. Is this gonna be it, or are you gonna go for a third? You we're gonna know. see how two is and go for there. Yeah. And just see what happens. Yeah. So um, you love the dad life. If you ask my wife, we're not anywhere close to being done but we'll see <laughs> you're like stay away from me wife <laughs> i don't want this anymore <laughs> no yeah. it's it's good we'll have to they'll be about two years apart so that's um, perfect yeah i can't believe i feel like you just had your son he's a year and a half that is unreal to me yeah. like how fast you know time goes by and i i'm trying to think back like when the first time i met you and and i think we talked about this briefly last year it was on that um hike to hunt yeah or hunt to hike with Ty Stubblefield, yep. and that was so long. That, was, ago. that had to have been six or six years ago, probably At seven least, years ago. Yeah, because yeah. I've been with Onyx um, for about seven and a half, I believe. Yeah, and it was very early on. Yeah, yeah. that was a long That's time crazy. ago, and and I was in much better shape back then. I think that was like a <laughs> four, thir like five thirty. You know, yeah. meet at a trailhead and hike yeah. is, is when we did meet the first time. Yeah, exactly. Well, and yep. I used to, like, really adhere to a philosophy. I traveled with my dog before I got married. Now I travel with my husband. Um, and so, you know, with him being a Ridgeback, I always really tried to, we had so much downtime in the car, I tried to find, like, a place to adventure and hike mm -hmm. or run. And, and Missoula has some great hiking around the vicinities yeah. from the M to, there's a, another trail system I went to outside of town. And then the hike to hunt Blue. area. Mountain, we went with Patty you. Canyon, yeah, there's yeah, a lot of so really accessible, like, you know, you can be at a trailhead right yeah. from town in like less yeah. than five minutes, which is well, nice. Well, in the, uh, Steve Decker, one of the founder's sons from RMEF, his wife is like an ultra runner, like she runs constantly, and she and I became friends, so she and I used to meet up mm -hmm. in Missoula, and we would go run together, and you know, super active, so, you know, Yogi and I are, I, I'm really feeling it, like I'm like, okay, I hit my middle age, my mid 40s, and I'm like, okay, I really have to try to make like a better effort of being fit, and, and for what we love to do, it's so important. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we were in the gym, and have Trying. been every day, and <laughs> <laughs> trying. Trying. I only had two bites of my dessert last night, I swear. <laughs> it was pretty good. It was that lemon tart thing. Yeah. It was like a piece of art. It was good. Yeah, that's one thing I can tell like people that are watching about this show. The Pepper Mill has good food. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this show, I mean, as a whole, this entire show is incredible. very, very well done. Yeah. And uh, like you were just saying, how time, how yeah. quickly time goes. Yeah. I keep looking at like sheep mounts and stuff, and it's like, that's a, it's a goal of mine someday yeah. to hunt sheep. And yeah. It's like time goes quick, so I better figure it out. <laughs> well, and so that's one thing. Onyx, you guys are here and you support the Less Than One Club. Like, you're mm -hmm. a sponsor of that. So, you know, for those of you that have never been to the sheep convention, Onyx is one of the people that, you know, there is several sheep hunts that they give away if you've never harvested a sheep. So it's like that everyday person's opportunity so to put their name in a hat and have an opportunity to draw a sheep tag. And you guys are supporting that, which is awesome because so many of your end users are like the public land DIY. Yep why you know not that wealthy private land hunter which yep. there's also that happening too obviously mm -hmm. but a lot of like you have that meat and potatoes bread and butter of onyx is is you know super public land dependent people are, are using your app yeah and that's really kind of where the product you know that's why it was essentially created right yeah. like our founder he was solving a problem for himself and i know we're going way back and i know you know this yeah. but just for the listeners like our founder, the Onyx founder, was solving a problem for himself. He moved from eastern Montana to western Montana. And when he got there, he just didn't know, okay, like, where can I hunt? Where, where's access points close to town? Um, you know, and you can find all that. You can research it. But he, he compiled everything that he needed yeah. and put it in a chip and made that compatible to work with his Garmin. So, yeah, and for those of you that don't know, you used to have to go down to your local sporting goods store every year and buy an updated chip yep. and plug it into your old school GPS, and that's how it functioned. You know, yep. like if your chip was out of date, you know, if land ownership changed, or, and it was like this like old school um, digital update, if yeah. you would. And, and that, you know. And even at the time, like what's so crazy is even at the time that seems so revolutionary 
as far as technology. Like, wow, I can put this chip in my handheld GPS and it works. Like, it was blowing people's mind at the time. And here we are today, like, you know, 10 years later, everybody's got a smartphone. Yeah. And now it just automatically updates on your phone. And the things you can get on your phone versus what you had on the chip is so much more yeah. detailed, so much better. It's uh, it's crazy to think about the changes and improvements in the last 10 years. Yeah. But it's also crazy to me to think, okay, 10 years ago when the chip first came out, that was like mind-blowing technology. Because yeah. prior to that, it was map, paper maps and trying to figure out where you were, you know, what bend you were at on the trail. Okay, do I need to go another four miles or six miles? Like, where am I at on this map? Running azimuths and reverse azimuths. Let me just tell you guys, I was lost a lot, okay? <laughs> and I am, I'm not exaggerating this in any way, shape, or form, but if it weren't for Onyx, I would be lost in the woods constantly. Like, I could not search my way out of a wet paper sack. <laughs> like, I, I'm terrible with navigation, but I'm so dependent on this. Like, even this year, you know, Yogi and I, we moved to Wyoming, and we know some people that were like, yeah, you know, you should check out these spots. They're they're cool. You know, mm -hmm. you're going to find deer here or elk here. And like one spot in particular, we hunted for deer there this year on public. It was deer and elk, but it was only open part of the season in October and it shut down early. And, and they were like, you know, it's desert. We don't know if there's water. We don't yeah. know what's in there. We have no idea. And so we literally packed up my mules and took out across country because there's no trails across the desert and you know we're going into this zone to hunt and we ran across another hunter packing out with horses and we're like well did you get a bull did you get a deer what do you know he's like no he's like i was being pretty selective and um we're like yeah we've never been in there we have no idea where we're going and he's like oh well i got this map from you know so and so and he goes i'll just share with you my route and the route that that person shared with me on how to get in and out of here where there's some good saddles to cross because with livestock it was yeah. a pretty treacherous area and then actually locating water was a major concern you yep. know i was terrified we were going to get eight miles in and have no drinking water or be drinking out of like yeah. a really bad condition like we had no idea and this guy was able to um we had phone service and so he actually emailed me his route and i was able to take and it was solid line route right like you know when you're on the route we were able to put that into our onyx and follow that we knew where all the gate crossings were where everything was like super solid and i mean it, it made a difference in our trip to where like i went from being very intimidated and nervous to okay we got this yeah that's really um, cool that's cool of him to uh Dude, how many do people that? do Not very that? many people are going to do that. They're going to be like, well, Nobody good, does that. good luck. It's pretty rough in there. Have fun. No, most <laughs> people are like, yeah, I hope you fall <laughs> and like roll an ankle and can't yeah. go hunting. You no, know? that's, there are yeah. still some, uh, some really cool, it's like helpful, decent humans people. out there, yeah. but you guys can share this stuff with your friends. Like you could update your maps. Like what mm -hmm. we did is what we, we would take like the trail he sent us and then we would make notes on his trail. Like don't go this way. And then we would find a better way and we would like yep. modify the route. And now we have like this living route and on on the way in we were going so slow on the way out we bombed out yeah. so fast it was so much easier um yep. i mean just simple little things like that that has transformed you know how we hunt yeah and too so like historically you could share like waypoints or routes or yeah. individual things um you know it's relatively it's not that recent but a lot of people still don't utilize it you could actually take that whole area and say you marked waypoints for like elk wallow, you know, good glassing point. You have like 30, 40, 50, however many waypoints, markups, trails, everything you can think. You can put that into a folder and just share that folder. So yeah, if I was going to go we hunt got. it. We got a whole folder. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And a lot of people aren't using that quite, uh, quite yet. You know, they're still sharing one-to-one -one waypoints mm -hmm. and those are still really helpful. I'll share my wife waypoints for, hey, I should be at one of these two trailheads yeah. if I'm hunting by myself, just so somebody knows where I'm at. Yeah, exactly. Um, but the the folder and like, okay, if you drew a unit that I had hunted, I could share all that with you and, mm -hmm. and it's right in your app. And so it's crazy the, uh, the advancements, you know, yeah. just in that aspect over the last year even. Well, we found a, a bull when we were elk hunting um, in a different zone. We found a bull and um, we told a friend who's from the area, like, we found this bull. And he's like, man, if I were you, um, this is how I would hunt it. And he told us to go down this ridge. And then Yogi gets on Onyx when we go home. And he's like, oh, no, I found a shortcut. Mm -hmm. 
we went on How was the shortcut? shortcut. I'm Usually looking at him shortcuts right now. are this like not eh. good. Dylan, <laughs> we were elk hunting, okay? And this was ridiculous because Yogi's flipping shortcut took us down this super steep um, creek bottom mm -hmm. and it was like overgrown and like rocks and it was so steep coming out of there i was like clinging to live brush yep. trying to pull myself up i wouldn't even carry the gun i made him carry the gun i'm like i'm not carrying the gun you you put us here you carry it it was literally <laughs> like sheep and goat hunting that's amazing i was so not happy um i was sweating profusely and i talk about this all the time because i'm a like if i move i'm like sweating when i'm hiking and it took us what was supposed to take like a shortcut yeah. it was like the super and like your onyx shortcut cut did not work it like, is it terrible. And then amazing the guy we told he's like yeah that's like the worst route you could have taken yeah. I'm like yeah no doubt it's amazing how many times like we do this on pack outs all the time like um i'm here with zach and so many times like packing out a bear or an elk or something yeah. we'll look at the map and be like okay this is not good like is there a better route is yeah. there a better option and we have learned 90% of the time, if not more, choose the suck that you know yes. instead of the suck you don't. <laughs> the like, new suck is we, suckier sometimes. And sometimes it pays <laughs> off. Sometimes it's like, wow, that was that was great. That yeah. was a good shortcut. Or, you know, it's better just to go, to go off this ridge and follow the creek bottom. Yeah. But especially by the time we're doing that, we're already kind of in a, a crappy position. Mm -hmm. And it's like headlamps on in the middle of the night. You got an elk quarter on and you're trying to find a new route. And it's like, Let's just choose the suck we know yeah. because, like, unless it's that bad, yeah. it's usually better than the one you don't. Oh, 100%. And so we I, – I shot my bull, and we had 1,600 vertical in a one-mile stretch, and then it got easy, quote-unquote. Well, we stumbled upon some, some spot that somebody at some point had at one time forever ago cleared a trail. Mm -hmm. Um, and they had it marked with cat eyes. And it was covered in windfall. It was a total disaster. But it was better than the alternative, right? Yep. And so we followed this old cat eye trail. And so we have this great now, like, breadcrumb trail of where that spot was. So that, like, this summer we can go back now and we can go cut that trail out. Yep. And improve it because obviously we're going to be going back there and yeah. hunting, um, but we can mark it to we we can find that spot in the dark. And that's one thing is like, nighttime is so disorienting. And you know we were so fatigued and thirsty and hungry. Like Yogi was like cramping. Thank God we had a bunch of wilderness athlete in our side by side when we got back out because he was like seriously suffering from dehydration. And um, now that we have that marked in our yep. in our map, when we went back the next day for our next load of quarters, it was so much faster yeah. and easier. Yeah, you're not you're just focused on like the task at hand and you're not constantly like looking for an alternative yeah. route, you know where you're going. And that's one thing too that I think is underutilized is like track yourself everywhere you go. Oh, yeah. Even if it's a bad route, like so many times I will track myself and get into an area and be like, that was absolutely horrible. I never want to go that route and again. And then you write that in your yeah. onyx. You're and like, never do So then this just again. change it, you know, a certain color. Like yeah. maybe all those ones are yellow or red or whatever. Red red tracks. Like if it Can if it's a red track. Can you break down segments of tracks then and be like, okay, so this is a green trail. And then we went from here to here, which is a half mile stretch. And that's now mm -hmm. a red line. Can you change the color segments? That's a good question. Not right now, um, but that's honestly a really good I mean, like, that would potential be awesome. feedback like yeah. you could do that like hey this is green and then we went to the right and we went through a half mile of hell. like i didn't like this section but yeah. the rest of it's good Bingo. um yeah that is really good feedback yeah that well, would be super great way to i mean even optimize that routing and then maybe yep. on your way out you try a new route and you're like okay well this isn't great but it's a yellow line yep so we have green for go yellow for caution red don't go yeah um, and you know, that would be if you could break out segments or even just, I guess maybe you could even line tool over. You could definitely do that. I'm spitballing here yep. guys. Sorry. No, no, Way you could there. do that. That would be cool. But I mean, there's been so many times in the dark too, where you're like struggling, side hilling, shale rock. Oh. And if you look at the map, if you just once in a while, it's really easy to just put your head down and like go, oh, for sure. you need to just go and, and get it over with. But if you study the map more often times than not, you will find, okay, if I go 20 feet up or, you know, 40 yards yeah, down, there's, a nice there's like a, a nice contour bench. where it benches out or even like an old logging road. Mm -hmm. I so many times have just struggled, you know, beat, beaten brush, like shale rock and everything. And if I would have gone like, you know, 10 yards above me, there's like an old logging road yeah. or a tr uh, elk trail that you didn't know yeah. was there.
Yeah, so. and then you can mark those yep. and, and use them. And um, So now we're going into application season right yes. now. And this is, you guys have um, purchased Top Threat this year. Yep. Which is instrumental. Now you were partnered with them last year and that was a big deal. But you guys, this is a tremendous opportunity for scouting. So, you know, you also partnered with Hunt and Fool. Mm -hmm. So we can, with an elite membership, you can go on and you have your digital Hunt and Fool membership. My husband studies the Hunt and Fool journals. Everyone that comes so out, valuable. cover to cover, dog ears pages, makes notes, mm -hmm. so valuable. You can do that digitally with your elite membership. Figure out where you want to go hunting for what species. And then you can flip over to Topra and be like, okay, well, how many points is this going to take yep. me? And you can strategize, not for just this this hunting year but for years in advance yeah well that's just it and it, as you know tags are harder and harder to get oh, for sure like we're not getting more opportunities no. if you are it's very very rare so it's like you know what i'm, I'm trying to figure out what am i going to do this year what am i going to do next year what am i going to do three five ten years from yeah. now like what are my goals and how do i achieve those mm -hmm. um Fortunately, we now both live in states that yeah. we we can hunt a lot, yeah. a lot of species, get a lot of tags, um, just as residents. But you know, out of state is is kind of like a must if you want to spend more time in the yeah. field. Um, even if you only or do different species. Yeah, exactly. You know, like Colorado. Once you're in three years, you can now apply for mountain goats and yep. moose and and species like as a non-resident you wouldn't necessarily have access to, you know, like for example, yep. when I was in Oregon, we didn't have moose hunting in Oregon. So, yep. you know, if I invested that time into Colorado, I would then have opportunity. Definitely. You know? so that, that really helps expand hunting opportunities, especially if you, you know, don't have a $35,000 check, you can write to go on a yeah. Yukon moose hunt. You exactly. Know? And it's so fun. Like I did a Colorado deer hunt this year, the mm -hmm. first time ever hunting Colorado, just hunting new country. Yeah. And like, uh, it's a completely different experience. Obviously you're hu still hunting mule deer. Like I've done that all my life, mm -hmm. but in a different setting, in a different, like, it was just, it was a challenge. It was really fun and really rewarding. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, application season, like it's, it's here and it's crazy, crazy how quickly it comes and goes every year. Um, but yeah, so we acquired top red, as you mentioned, everything you need for draws, all Western yeah. states. Um, the hunt and full digital membership is crucial for like, yeah. How do I apply for Idaho? Like, what does that mean? Is there a point system? Is it preference point? Is it bonus point? What's the difference? Like, what's it gonna cost me? Mm -hmm. Like, Huntful breaks all that down. And then also they have a lot of insight of like, okay, this unit is a good unit for this type of hunt and yeah. so on and so forth. Um, the knowledge there is just incredible. Yeah. Um, and then kind of the third prong to it is Hunt Reminder. Mm -hmm. So all elite members get a free uh, membership to Hunt Reminder. So I can say, hey, I'm interested in Colorado deer, elk, antelope, you know, Wyoming, moose, sheep, goat, and, you know, all, and this is for all 50 states. And then you get a text, text reminder, email reminder, like a month out, yeah. a week out, and a day saying like, hey. Well, because so many states have different application time frames, like Wyoming, elk, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that comes and goes really quickly. Well, Non-residents coming up quick. Yeah, Non-residents, like, we're right there. Like, yep. you had better be doing it, Wyoming. I'm trying to figure <laughs> out if I'm going or not. So, yeah, yeah I'm in that yeah. boat. So, it's, it's, I mean, like, and then, and then they'll have later on in the year, they'll have antelope or they'll have deer or, you know, so you, you know, some states have it really easy where everything goes at once yep. other states it's multiple draws and then you can buy preference points or bonus points for uh, throughout different times of the yeah. year and it's really like you have to be an expert like full-time studying this stuff which mm -hmm. is why that combination helps like knowing yeah. those dates from hunt and fool and then also from hunting reminder or hunt reminder um and getting that hey don't forget to put in for this or that yeah and i mean you forget it oh, it's happened to inevitable. everybody so that well and then if you miss a year you know the last thing you want is to be out of the pool that year yeah. when you're up to possibly draw especially with point creep too yeah. like in those states um, where, where it's preference point and stuff. Like mm -hmm. you miss a year, like you might not get that take for no. another two, three, four years mm -hmm. than, than you plan potentially. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And life is busy. Like we're all super busy. I, you know, I've got little ones running around yeah. now. Like, I don't know, I can't keep track of every single deadline for every state. So that's like, it's great. Like my phone will go off and I'll look at it and it's like, okay, Wyoming, you've got one mm -hmm. week left. You have one day left apply. Yeah. Um, links directly from that to applying and stuff so it uh yeah it's a good helpful reminder yeah no it is fantastic and this is the time right now so if you guys are not an onyx hunt elite member 
I'm going to save you 20%. Yep. So if you go online to Onyx Hunt's website and you click new membership, you subscribe to the new membership and you enter in code WILD20 at checkout, you'll save 20% on a new membership. So we'll yep. help you save a little bit of coin and then, you know, you'll be forever hooked. And, um, you know, you, this is your relationship with your Onyx is something that you build on. I use it. We were talking about this even last year. For, for real estate purposes, like mm -hmm. we've been shopping land and I'm able to take an area circle and draw out, okay, well, how many acres is this area? Yep. How, you know, And there's so many applications for it. It's it's actually mind blowing um, <laughs> the things that you can do with it. You know, what is what is this feeding area? How big is this feeding area? What is, you can measure that yep. um, accurately, line distance measurements, you know, how many yards across is something. Um, let's say your range finder goes on the fritz <laughs> and you've got an elk across a drainage and you you know you don't know you know are you pushing your limitations yep. and you can use that line tool to kind of cheat and and get your range estimates yeah too, we, which is we did really that in awesome. colorado this year oh, for sure the it was so foggy that our range, range finders finder weren't work. weren't picking it up and there was a fence line um that we could see when the fog would come in and out we could see it and so we knew there was deer we guessed about 75 80 yards into mm -hmm. public um from that fence line so we use the line tool and actually now it's it's a really new feature but we have like a two finger quick line distance tool so instead of oh yeah you yeah, just spread your fingers yeah out. instead of creating like a line and then having to delete it mm -hmm. you just enable it within the settings and then you tap um both fingers on the map and it'll shoot you that line distance you let it go it, it just removes it from the map so we use that feature to figure out okay that that fence line is i can't remember some 450 yards away whatever it was um we figured those deer were about 75 yards within it so it's like if a opportunity presented itself, like mm -hmm. we we're very confident that yeah. we had, you know, within 10 to 15 yards of a range mm -hmm. um, to make a shot when our range finders would not work. Both of my animals in Wyoming this year were like that, like the bull I shot, um, when he came out of the timber, I knew I had about 200 yards before he hit private. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I literally did not wait for him to mess around. <laughs> like I lay, I was laid down and we, we laid there all day long waiting on him. And um, I, I mean, because the risk was if I if I try to get down and get closer or do, make another move, he's gonna he's gonna get over to private. And now it was not fenced private, right? Yep. So that made it even more complicated, which is what Onyx is so great for too, because you're responsible to know where those boundaries are. And so um, I'm like, man, I see where he's at, and I'm looking at this um, you know 3D map, and I see these two bushes here and here. And once he gets you know 50 yards above those, he's out of out of zone, right? Yep. And so. Um, we were able to use that to, to know and, and, and say, okay, I'm, I'm, I can make this shot right now. Um, my, my mule deer was the same thing. You know, the deer had been on private. He crossed into public. That one um, was a little more, you know, we could tell. Yep. But a lot of times fences aren't accurate the, no, anyway. They're not accurate and, or they're just not there, like you said. Yep. I mean, in eastern Montana, I've killed some of my best bucks on like, like a quarter section by a half section that juts into private. Yeah. And there's no fences there. Yeah. There's no way I would, I would feel confident Walking hunting that without yeah. knowing like uh one of my best whitetails was that same scenario mm -hmm. we knew where the the boundary was and like we're talking zooming in on aerial imagery to being like okay that's that bush right there like yeah. that has to be that bush okay there's a rock outcropping to the right yep that's confirmed that's where that is so that boundary is okay 12 yards past that yep without that like you just don't know and you're gonna no. make you're you're gonna either a not take advantage of opportunities mm -hmm. or b just not hunt it or not pull the trigger yeah. on that animal because you don't know because you don't know and yeah it's just it gets a little dicey with with some landowners and stuff and for sure you know and too like are you gonna be shooting for a double lung or are you gonna yeah. try to high shoulder yeah. you know that what's your animal? shot placement gonna yeah. be yeah exactly and your hat says it all uh on x hunt know where you stand and that is it's not just where you're standing know where that animal is yep. and you can hunt with that confidence and we use it um, you know, just it's nonstop. Like we're scouting. Yogi's on X is insane. Like <laughs> he, I, I put waypoints in. He marks everything. Yep. Like if he sees a doe feeding, he's like doe. I mean, he marks every animal so that when he can get home, he can kind of take this aerial look it. back and study. Okay, well, I saw a bunch of does here. I saw this and that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, because of the work that we did. You know, moving to a new state, we knew nothing. We yep. never hunted there. We were a hundred percent. I mean, how often is that? Like our whitetail in Wyoming 
there's very, very little whitetail habitat on public ground. Like, especially in the zone that we put in for, Mm because we did like a leftover tag this year. And Yogi studied every piece of public ground that had anything nearby that would have good whitetail habitat or any chunk that even like slid in. And um, it was unbelievable. The, the, the section of public that we hunted this year that we were successful with whitetail, the habitat piece was so small for whitetail. There must have been a hot doe or something yep. in there because he rattled in a buck one day, harvested his deer. The next day I went back in that same spot, like Another literally, buck. we rattled in a second buck and harvested that buck also in the same spot. And it, we're talking like when you're looking at Onyx and you're like, okay, well, there's a 20 or 50 acre section of good whitetail habitat mm-hmm. on an 800 acre piece, and that's all you have. I mean, from a public land standpoint, you have to focus on where the animals are, and that's exactly what we were able to do this year. And, and to be, you know, non resident. Um, coming into a new spot and be that successful this year to go 100% was super awesome. Yeah. Like, I mean, it was, it, and it's 100% on X. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. And I think you hit the nail on the head there. It's not so much what you're marking in the field. It's like sometimes it's studying it after the fact yeah. because you might not be able to put all the pieces together while you're out no. there. Like, okay, elk feeding, you know, if you're dropping waypoints, for example, elk feeding here, elk bedding here, wallow here, saddle here, you put all that on the map and then once you get home you can look at it on a bigger screen you could put it up even on your tv screen or your ipad yeah look it on 3d um there's so many things you can do and really just like study it and it all of a sudden it might might click like wow there's looking at topo in 3d there's a bench down where that wallow is you know that saddle's right over here there's feet on the other side like you can figure out like what that herd is doing Mm -hmm. and then go back in there and be more successful and uh one thing that's really new, we actually haven't even talked about it, but it's live. Uh, it's called Terrain X. It's mm-hmm. on the computer only right now. Um, but it's it's really cool and it would really help with that. So you can look at the map. You can say, okay, I want to highlight areas from 5,500 feet to 6,500 feet. Yeah. And it will only show you where those are. You can do aspect ratio. You can do slope angle. Um, you could say, okay, I want to just look at south facing slopes yeah. between 45, 5,500 feet and this degree of slope. So it'll highlight those areas for you. Um, but also another cool feature within that is called view shed. And if you turn that on anywhere that you place your, your cursor on the map, it will show you what you could physically see from that, that area. Oh, wow. Yeah. So for like finding glassing points or, you know, shooting knobs, mm-hmm. things like that. It's not going to be, you know, if there's a ton of vegetation on your side, that could be a limitation, but it will help you a ton Mm -hmm. identify, okay, can I, if I get to this knob, can I see around or can I see below me? Mm -hmm. Um, So it'll highlight everything that you could see based on the topography, slope angle and and everything. Mm -hmm. A lot more sophisticated than I am. So um, I'll leave that to the engineers to figure out. But that's really impressive. um, Yeah, it's it's really cool. And it's it's one of those things that's brand new. Again, we haven't really talked about it yeah. because we saw some improvements coming yeah. to it. Uh, but if you look at all your waypoints and everything in conjunction with that, you yeah. might say, wow, there's a correlation between all of my elk bedding waypoints and 57 to 6,000 feet of elevation. Like yeah. they must, for whatever reason, this like to bed in that band. Right yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's another kind of a new feature. Well, it was interesting because the spot that I harvested my elk this year, I laid down to shoot my bull and um, we found old brass there. It's yeah. like, okay, well, this obviously is a spot that, you know, other hunters have been successful at least making shots. I don't know, <laughs> you know. Um, and so, how many, how many brass were there? Well, yeah. I, well, and then we saw some live rounds in the bottom of the creek. I'm like, so there must have been like a gong show happen up there. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but I think, you know, it, it, it does go to show you that those spots are, you know, good points or good points or good points. And if you can locate them before you get to a spot, the worst thing you can do is just wear yourself out thinking, well, if I just go another 100 yards, if I go another 100 yards, if I go, in, well, pretty soon you've gone a mile and your view hasn't improved or it's yep. gotten worse. And then you got to climb back out. And that, that sucks. Yep. So this kind of maybe will take some of that guesswork out of it for you so you can get a virtual look at an area before yeah. you actually have and to And just know, too, like, if I'm going to climb 2,000 feet right away in the morning, am I going to potentially see what I want to see from yeah. this area? Nope. Well, I need to look at something different then. Yeah. 
Yeah, we need to come up with a plan B. Yep. Yeah. So what else new and great that is Onyx doing this year? So another big one um, we just launched is Apple CarPlay. Okay. So anything. Oh, I know. Yeah. I am so excited about That's this That's one of those features that is like, it's not revolutionary in the fact that like nothing really has changed just yeah. the ability to see it on your car in your dash. yeah um but it's so helpful yeah. you know we've been wanting i've been wanting this for a couple of years um and we we got around to it and got that implemented so apple carplay android is coming soon actually it's done we're waiting on google to approve it sometimes yeah. that could take a week sometimes it could take several months um just a heads up because we get a lot of questions about that like yeah. I see everybody using this. I have an Android. Um, when is this coming out? So, but Apple CarPlay, like everything you see on your phone, waypoints, everything is right on the dash now. So if you're driving around, it's so useful for anything, but like especially Antelope. Like, well, we're always looking sometimes for these tiny little roads of yep. access points, and it, like you're saying, antelope. Mm -hmm. That we were, um, we got behind a whole herd of antelope this year with, with, with old roads that we could use on our side by side. Now, obviously, that's not compatible with this, yep. but even in a pickup truck, you can have that on your phone and be like, "Whoa, nope, stop!" You just back up 10 feet you just drove by the road yeah i mean and you're seeing it and the driver's seeing it also instead of it being on your tiny phone yeah and so many times like you know if you are trying to cover country scouting in your your pickup or vehicle or whatever if you see an antelope and you are hunting you're just kind of cruising country the first thing is like grab your phone is it private public is it accessible you know yeah. how could we get to it and so now you, it's just right there on your dash yeah that's that is um like you said it's something that is so simple and accessible and it's a brand yep. new feature so yep. that's really exciting in addition to everything else you guys are, are are launching with onyx and you know what makes you guys famous from the beginning though is your landowner information mm -hmm. and knowing whether you're on private public who owns it you know if you guys are in the midwest and you want to knock on doors yep. talk a little bit about like that midwest hunting um some new advances that you guys have for the whitetail hunter yeah, so we're working on a lot of stuff right now. Like, obviously, we were founded in the West. We are, you know, our first couple of states with the chip are like Montana, Wyoming. Yeah. So um, that will always be core to us. That's where my heart lives and a lot of our customers. But we have a ton of folks in the Midwest, Southeast that, that use a product for whitetail hunting. Yeah. Whether you're, you know, whether you are a public land hunter or you're hunting like your back 40. Yeah. Um, you know, it can be helpful. And we're working on a lot of really cool features. Can't quite talk about yet, but, yeah. but specifically geared toward that whitetail hunter. How can we help that hunter who is hunting the same 40, 60, 80 acres mm -hmm. um, manage their property better and be more successful with, mm -hmm. you know, trail cams and, and stand locations and wind and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So one cool thing for the whitetail hunters, like I still use it in the West, but it was, you know, a feature geared more toward whitetail yeah. hunters, stand hunters, sitters. Um, you can drop a waypoint, obviously, but then you can tap that waypoint and you can add uh, the wind for that location. Mm -hmm. So it'll show you for that location what the predominant wind is mm -hmm. and what like what the wind is currently. But a really cool additional feature on top of that is it's called optimal wind. So if I have a stand set up and I want like a a northeast wind is mm -hmm. like the optimal wind to hunt that stand location. I can actually import that into that waypoint and and say, okay, you know, whether you want to be specific and say just northeast, or if you want to kind of open it up to like, yeah, yeah this is this is like the most ideal, but here's some alternatives yeah, you can that would also, work. If it has a little bit of uh, south in it, yep. it might be okay, but yeah, yep. exactly. Yeah. So you can put all that in there and then mm -hmm. at a glance, look at your waypoint yeah. and it, you can see where the wind is coming from and if it's uh highlighted green mm -hmm. that means it's a good wind from what you've imported, imported. Okay. Uh, to hunt that stand if it's yellow it's like ah, a little yeah. iffy if it's red that wind is not good so, so that's all new because in the past what i've done is i'll set my waypoint for my whitetail stands and then i'll say north wind yep. northwest wind and then i'll title yep. it so that i know okay well if i have a northwest wind these are the stands i want to hunt but having a color coding system to go with it will be yeah really so beneficial. i mean if you're somebody who has you know 10, 15, however many stands, yeah. at a glance of your property, you can see, okay, all of these ones are red, there's a couple yellows, oh, these there's the two greens that like for the wind right now, it's it's optimal for, for the stands. Like it just saves you time. Oh, for sure. And then like for this year, we were in Kansas and there was a deer I wanted to hunt and he was super regular, had been there for two weeks and I had tried to get there faster and I couldn't 
we drove clear up to hunt this deer and we had to sit in camp for days mm -hmm. because the wind wasn't right yep. right and so i mean though that will help so much you identify okay today's go day you know staying out of those spots and don't mess them up because those white-tailed deer you know if you blow it on them you may never have a chance yep. on them again so just waiting for that optimal wind that makes it just so much faster and easier and a lot of outfitters you guys if you've not done a lot of whitetail hunting with an outfitter a lot of outfitters um they do semi-guided hunts and they tell their clients hey you need to download on x because we're going to give you a waypoint mm -hmm. we're going to tell you where to park they're going to show you on your phone okay here's where you park um here's the waypoint for the stand and then they'll have cat eyes marked in or they'll have a trail laid out for you to get to your stand and you're responsible for putting yourself in there yeah um and that's really on you know a lot of the more economical hunts especially that's the way a lot of outfitters are going that they they don't want to do a full service um, you know, where you, you know, especially imagine you're in camp with like 10 other hunters yep. and there's two guides and you're, you know, the fifth guy out and you know, you're the first guy out, the last guy in, you're sitting hours before daylight and yep. dark potentially, right? Well, Waiting and it's to just get that, picked up. that many more people in the woods, right? Yep. Like if you don't need somebody to walk you into your stand and walk you back exactly. out, then that's that much less scent. Yep. Um, if they can share a track of like, hey, here's how to get into your stand yes. where they know that's the best route and you're going to you spook the, the least amount of deer getting in mm -hmm. your stand in the morning, like that's going to be optimal. And a, one other cool way of using tracking that I've seen whitetail hunters do in the off season, shed season, whatever, they'll walk all their deer trails yes. and keep their track on. And then again, when they get home or whatever, they'll look at it from a, a larger perspective and say, okay, where do all of these cross? Like what's the correlation? Mm -hmm. Where's some good spots to set up stands? Mm -hmm. And you might see like a couple pinch points that you didn't really know existed. Mm -hmm. But if you're getting like a lot of those trails that cross at a particular pinch point or location, all right, can I set a stand there? Is that gonna be something of, of value for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I can't believe how much I, you know, every year I just become more reliant on Onyx. And I say this all the time from, from whitetail to elk, when it comes to roads, when it comes to trails, mm -hmm. when it comes to water, habitat, well, you know, and, and going back to our layers, let's talk a little bit about some of the layer features that people can utilize um, on Onyx. We, we've got wildfire layers, yep. we've got habitat improvement layers that you guys have partnered with different conservation groups like RMEF yep. on different, you know, the water projects. And, and you guys highlight all of these things to help make it so much easier for us mm -hmm. when we're in the backcountry. Yeah, there's so much, there's so much data. It's um, unreal, actually. It's it almost is. overwhelming. It can be. And yeah. that's what I always tell people is like, instead of getting overwhelmed, just, just play around with it in yeah. the off season. Or if you have 30 minutes where you're not doing anything, instead of scrolling on Instagram, pull up on X and just, mm -hmm. just turn the layers on and off, see what it mm -hmm. does on the map, visualize it. Um, Cause a lot of people, I would say, you know, a vast majority of our customers, they do still buy it for the private public and the game management unit boundaries, roads, trails, like the, the basic map things that they need. Um, but there is so much more valuable information. As you said, historic wildfire layers. Yeah. So we'll show, you know, exactly the outline of a fire, what year it burned, any additional information on that fire, um, timber cut layers. So the imagery might be a couple years old, yeah. but if there was a recent timber cut, um, you know, you can see that on the map if you have it turned on. But a lot of times those ones is the year. Yep. It's almost more important than oh, anything. For sure. Because as that- How grown is it? Exactly. How grown up is it? How much visibility are we going to maintain or lose yep. with that year of growth or that layer of growth or um, that all, I mean, you know, it may it may look like short timber yep. on your 3Ds, but if you look at the if you look at the harvest year, you know you can correlate that to an estimated. Um, yep. You can correlate that to an estimated age and, and determine a potential size of that timber. Yep, definitely. And I mean, again, the list goes on and on. There's so many so many things. One of the ones that's really helpful for access is like uh, block management is what it's called yeah. in Montana. I mean, that's all private land that is in a program that allows us to go hunt it. Some of it, all you have to do is go sign your name in and you're free to go hunt. Each one has its own rules and everything, which we do link to that within the block management um, in the app. But some of them you have to call ahead of time and get on a schedule. Um, but it, it just opens up so much opportunity. opportunity. And it's, it's an additional step that a lot of people don't go through. Mm -hmm. A, because they don't know about it. B, because they're just like, ah, eh, it's a hassle. I can just go hunt public. Um, and oftentimes what I found is if you take the, the time, and sometimes that's literally driving to a box and signing your name in before you go hunting. But if you take that time, you are probably going to have a better 
hunting yeah. experience because that's just one more hurdle to, to hunt that property. It's accessible to everybody, yeah. um, but not a, not a ton of people are doing it. So let's talk also a little bit about um, downloading maps. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people still don't know. They think, well, I don't want to use Onyx because it's I, I'm not going to have phones over swarm hunting. Yep. You guys... We can download these maps in advance and save them, and you guys have expanded the size uh, capacity of those maps to some degree. Yep. Yeah, so it's it's probably the biggest misconception with Onyx yeah. still. We have customers that will reach out and be like, hey, I've used Onyx for years. I love it. It's amazing. But it doesn't work where I hunt because I don't have cell service. And so we also kind of bang our head against the wall and, like, where are we missing telling our customers and, and showing them this um, feature whenever we hear that. But we do have so right now you have three different options you can download like a five, five mile and ten. five ten and a hundred okay so what i typically do is like i have the entire state of montana downloaded with 100s so no matter where i go in montana you have a map i have a map i can still see is it private public is there a road there a trail what game management unit is it um so on and so forth and then my hunting areas i usually do tens mm -hmm. a lot of white tail hunters and people who really fives. need that like extra detail on the imagery will do fives mm -hmm. um but tens is plenty enough yeah. um, for me so I, I mean I have hundreds of same maps yeah and as long as you're within that area that you pre-saved mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if you saved it a day before your hunt a week a year or on your way out there or on your way out there <laughs> like as long as you're within it you are good yeah. to go you can still turn layers on and off yeah. you still track yourself and if um, you have kind of crummy cell service even if you have cell service yep. a lot of times I'll just go straight up into offline mode because I don't want to deal with it bouncing in and yeah. out you and know? it saves your battery tons like, of battery saves yeah. your battery especially if you're going on like a backpack hunt mm -hmm. for three five seven days i never come off airplane mode mm -hmm. like you might as well not you're going to save a lot of battery but yeah i mean you can save it you can use it completely without cell service yeah it is it is a, such a powerful tool you guys if you're not using onyx um, I can't encourage you enough. You guys also have some off-road mm -hmm. uh, maps, which is kind of a separate family. Yep. But if you're into off-roading, I mean, so much of what we do is off-road, and there's a lot of value to the yep. off-road uh, family of maps. Um, so if you're looking for more ATV access and, and things like that, like check out the off-road uh, features as well. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So we have Hunt, which is uh, where we started. Yep. Um, we have off-road. And the off-road product is... It's got a lot of the same features, but it's more tailored toward, like you said, like the, the Jeep mm -hmm. people that are doing certain trails or four wheelers or so on and so forth. Um, snowmobilers in the winter. I use yeah. it snowmobiling all the time to see avalanche forecasts and slope angles to figure out, okay, if I drop down in here. Mountain I'm, lion hunters. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of value there too, but it's a lot more user generated mm -hmm. content. So in off road, I can do a trail and type a message into it and say like, hey, at mile, 2.5 there's a waterfall on the right hand side it's a cool place to stop you know yeah. things like that where whereas hunters we're not going to, to share that information, to share that information yeah. unless you're the guy you ran into in wyoming dude i know right <laughs> i'm so impressed by that <laughs> I, that's um, like the nicest thing that has ever happened to me ever. yeah <laughs> but uh yeah. you know you can just share a lot more of that like yeah this is a very difficult trail at at four and a half miles to yeah. five and a half miles make sure you have x amount of clearance you yeah. know so on and so forth so yeah that's a, a cool product as well and then we also have backcountry um, which is more like the backcountry skiing um, and more adventure stuff in the backcountry so you guys have literally a product for everyone and i don't want this to just be like some like oh onyx is so great but really onyx is so great and and i have you on every year because you guys are always innovating and there's so much new um as a consumer it's really hard to keep up with the technology mm -hmm. and the innovation that you guys have and that's you know what i love about you guys is you're always building not only a great product but every year you make it even better yeah um and more usable and user friendly and so if you guys aren't onyx hunt elite members i again want to push this out there you can save 20 percent. use code wild 20 at checkout get online um that you guys have a ton of um blogs if you will on mm -hmm. your site that has q a information how to information uh great resource if you have questions plus you also have a really great customer service department yeah our customer service team is uh, that's actually where i started yeah. in customer service um again like seven eight years ago and 
we've definitely changed since then. I was like, a, I was the customer service rep, one person at the time. Yeah. Uh, much, much larger team now. But yeah, everybody in customer service is using the product. You're not going to get somebody who's like, oh yeah, let me go look it up real quick. Like yeah. they use the product. They know. They know what's going on. Um, and yeah, even as an employee, I, I'm in the maps all the time. Yeah. And sometimes it's difficult for me to keep up with, with mm -hmm. the changes and updates and everything. Mm -hmm. So I can, I can definitely understand from a customer standpoint, like, okay, I figured this out and it's different this year. Well, it's because we added a feature or we added mm -hmm. more detailed weather or mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So um, again, one thing I always tell people to do is just play with the map. You're not yeah. gonna break it. No. Turn layers on, turn layers off, add waypoints, delete them, you know, just play around and familiarize yourself with what you can do in there. Mm -hmm. And that and way when you're hunting. figure out a system that works for you. Yeah, exactly, because it's different for everybody. Yeah. I mean, you and I are gonna use the map completely differently. Um, and that's what's cool about it. It's not like a cheat sheet, you know, like it's not like if you have this and figure it out, you're going to find more animals. Everybody's going to use that data differently mm -hmm. and analyze it differently and then hunt differently because of it. Yeah. And if you get your elite membership, you have access to all of these great application tools. Now is the time to take advantage of that. Uh, figure out your hunting seasons, figure out your strategies, get a plan in place and you can hunt with confidence with Onyx. So you guys get online, check out Onyx Hunt. What is the actual website? Is it onyxmaps.com? Onyxmaps.com. Yep. Um, and also on social media, give you guys a follow on social media. You are also, if you guys go in there, they are always doing some really great um, uh, schools, if you will. Mm -hmm. What are you guys calling them? I'm master classes. Master class, yeah. that's right. Yep. And so they bring in uh, people that have expertise in a specific area and they offer a master class. So, like an informative uh, session where you can log in and watch these kind of like a Zoom call yep. and provide tons of information um, about different types of hunting or navigating or whatever the topic is, depending on the master class topic. Um, it's super fun and it's a great way to engage and really, like we said, live that hunting lifestyle yeah. life, life uh, year round awesome yeah cool. thank you all for uh tuning into this episode of the wild and uncut podcast dylan thank you for taking the time again this is our second year in a row doing this and i really appreciate you yeah. carving out some time to share with us you know some tools that are going to help us be more successful on our hunts and doing what we love to do definitely so thank, you. thank you guys appreciate it a buck's antler growth potential is tied directly to his nutritional intake the quicker they recover from the stress of the rut and the harsh elements found in winter months, the sooner they can begin new antler development. Supplemental nutrition, like the Rack One system, promotes healthy deer herds and jumpstarts new antler growth. Rack One's grow phase is specifically designed to provide everything that deer need to recover and reach their genetic potential. Accelerator is the apex when it comes to optimizing whitetail mineral intake and big game butters fuel deer with 22% protein and 44% fat to boost antler growth and supercharge recovery. To learn more about the grow, scout, or hunt systems from Rack One, visit the website at huntrack1.com. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.